I want to make a quick note so you can put a subheading before you start the exercise. But as it boots up, there's one really little confusing item that I want to address head on before you get started, so you don't get confused about it. About all kinds of certs when you've got the square root or the cube root sign, and when you evaluate the number at the other end. Okay? So, the square root of a number. Let's just call the number, well, in algebra, when you don't know what a number is, what do you call it usually? Usually you call it x. Okay. The square root of x, we define that as a positive number. Okay? The reason why is you've actually been doing square roots for a really long time attached to a particular kind of shape. Does anyone remember what kind of shape requires square roots? Let me give you a bit of a hint. Okay, if you have a right angled triangle, right? Uh, let's make it a triangle. There we go. Okay. In a right angled triangle, if you know two sides, what do you do to get to the last one? You use Pythagoras' theorem, which has squares and therefore has square roots in it, okay? Now, I think we all know what this number is going to be, right? But where it comes from is, it's the square root of, or in this case, <laughs> three, squared. 3 squared plus 4 squared. Okay? Now, here's the thing. It's a length, right? So, therefore, that has to be positive. Do you agree? Like, lengths that you measure out have to be positive. So, therefore, we define the square root of x to always be positive. Whoops. E is always positive. Except in a single case, there's only one number in the entire universe that does not have a positive value when you take its square root. Does anyone know what it is? Zero. 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 You can take the square root of zero. What's the number that you multiply by itself to give you zero? And the answer is zero. But zero is not positive. Is it negative? It's kind of neither, which is a bit strange, okay? So this is the important note I want you to get down. The square root of x is always positive, except when x equals 0, right? So we know square root of 100, it's positive. Square root of 256, positive. Square root of weirdo numbers, which give you something strange, still positive. But if you have the square root of 0, that's the only one where you don't get a positive number. Which then begs the question, well, if the positive numbers work and zero works, what about when you put something negative underneath the square root sign? What happens? Hmm. Now, the inquisitive and quick among you will go straight to your calculator and your calculator will faithfully tell you the syntax error or math error, right? Which is a calculator saying, a calculator's way of saying, Hello. Okay. So I actually want to tell you more than the calculator knows. So underneath where you've talked about it being positive, right? I want you to write down that the square root of x is, and put this in um, put this in inverted commas for me, is undefined when x is negative. Now, let me push on this a little bit, okay? Everything I'm supposed to teach you that I'm required to teach you as part of the year 10 syllabus is on the board, okay? That's what you have to know about the square root of x. This is what it does when it's positive, when it's zero, when it's negative, don't worry about it. That's what the syllabus requires me to teach you. However, I want to push just a little further on it, and it'll only take me 60 seconds. Humor me a little bit. What's five take away three? Two. It's two, <laughs> right? I'll show you why. <clears throat> there we go. Five, five, take away, catch. One, two, three. I, I've, I've taken away three. Is two. Do you agree? Five take away three is two. We're fine with that. Okay, I need one of these back. Just one. If we know five take away three is two, what's three take away five? Now, pause for a second. Before you say an answer, you actually can work out what the answer is, and you guys know enough maths to be able to repeat an answer back, okay? But my son, who is uh, six at the moment and is learning about adding and subtracting, will tell you, uh, you, you can't. You can't. Because watch, uh, three take away five is uh, one, two, three, uh, can't do any more. Sorry, forget it. No, it's just because I don't trust my throwing arm. I, 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 yeah. 
pet Mustafa or something like that. So sorry. Okay. Uh, you can't do it. You can't do three take away five. He would say, you yeah, know, I do need this back. He would say three take away five is. I don't have a definition for that. Okay. Now here's the thing. You guys know there is a definition for it. What, what is it? Negative. It's negative two. We like invent this new kind of number to be the answer for this. There is an answer for this. It's just not what I'm going to explore just yet. Just like my son hasn't learned about negative numbers yet because I don't want to blow his brain. <laughs> he will learn about it eventually. If you want to ask me a question about what happens here, you're more than welcome to. But this is where year 10 sort of draws a line and says, well, you can peek over behind the veil if you want, but we learn this later on. Okay, so I'm just going to tease that. All right, I'm going to pause there. Um, you've all by now opened up to 101. You've got enough to understand what's a CERD and what's not. All right? Have a look on the board. How many CERDs are there on the board? Just, just look. There's just, there's just one, isn't there? Do you see which one it is? It's the one I asked you to work out. The square root of 101. See all the rest of these guys? Why aren't they CERDs again? Because they stop. Right? So then there's regular numbers you knew before, whole numbers, fractions, they're fine. We're interested in these really weird special ones. 